Today, we're going to start getting back into doing some deep dives, and we're going to kick things off with the U.S. Senate election in Florida. It's not a top-tier, high-profile race. Republicans are favored, but if a blue wave emerges, Democrats might be thinking they could have a viable pickup here. So we're going to try to quickly cover the basics of this race, and we're going to start here on Ballotpedia with a little bit of background. So the incumbent senator here is Republican Rick Scott. He's running for re-election to a second term. Prior to his time in the Senate, Scott did serve two terms as governor of Florida. In 2008, Scott defeated three-term incumbent Democrat Bill Nelson. It was a very narrow race, but he won his first term in the Senate. His opponent on the Democratic side is Debbie Mukarso Powell. Her prior political experience is she's a former one-term U.S. representative from South Florida. She also defeated an incumbent in 2018, but she was defeated herself when she ran for re-election in 2020. So let's see how these two did in their primaries. For Mukarso Powell, she had mild opposition and she prevailed with almost 69% of the vote. For Rick Scott, he's the incumbent, but he had even milder token opposition. His support in that race was over 84%. And if you like to compare raw primary vote totals, Bukarso Powell was at about 1,067,000, while Rick Scott was over 1.5 million. I don't put a lot of weight on those primary numbers, but if you do, Scott had a significant advantage. Now let's go down a little bit more and see how this race is rated. So there's not at all a consensus here. Inside Elections has this at solid Republican, while Cook and Larry Sabato have it at likely, but Decision Desk has it all the way down at Lean's Republican. My own most recent rating for this was just into likely Republican territory. That's going to be over a 5% margin. I've always thought Scott was a little bit of a weaker type of candidate. However, he's definitely proven himself. He's won three races statewide that were easily under 2% margins. Scott is a more soft-spoken guy, and he's a very wealthy guy. He's definitely in it to win it. He's been around a while now, and to Scott's credit, in the blue wave of 2018, where Republicans got wiped out in the U.S. House, Scott defeating Bill Nelson in the Senate is a big deal. On the other side, Debbie Mukarso Powell. She's trying to run a non-controversial campaign. There's an abortion amendment on the ballot in Florida. That's going to be a good issue for her, but she's also going to struggle to get her name ID up as high as Scott's. She only put in one term in the U.S. House and that was defeated, so her track record is a lot weaker than Scott's electorally. If we go up here, we can take a look at the campaign finance, and money does not necessarily translate to votes. It's hard to bet against Scott at this point, but if a blue wave emerges late and things line up for Mukarso Powell while Scott falters, then there could be some potential here for this to unexpectedly flip blue. But let's take a look at the county map on a presidential level to see which way some of these counties might be trending. Keep in mind the turnout is going to be higher. Let's go right to South Florida in Miami-Dade. We can see it's a blue county, but it's a lot redder than it used to be prior to 2020. Last time was a big loss of support for Biden and a big gain of support for Trump at the top of the ticket. A potential bellwether might be Pinellas. In between 16 and 20, this county actually got a little bit bluer. Next door in Hillsborough, not much of a change between 16 and 20. How about the Orlando area in Orange County. Between 2012 and 20, the Democratic support went up by about one point. On the other side, in 16, Trump did about five points worse than Romney. But in 2020, he got his support back up over two points. How about the Jacksonville area? This county has gotten bluer. Biden's support last time went up four points while Trump's ticked down over one. And if you look at a lot of these red counties in northern Florida and the Panhandle, most of them, but not all of them, have gotten redder since Trump started running for office. So even though it's well known that Florida was one of the few states that the red wave hit in 2022. Not all of the state got redder. South Florida and the Hispanic trends there, that's been a significant driver behind what's moving this state toward the right. So Debbie Mukarso Powell is from South Florida. Theoretically, that should help her in places like Miami-Dade. But the Republican Party has increasingly become the one that voters are moving toward. So Rick Scott is hoping with Trump at the top of the ticket that the trends in this part of the state will continue and spill over onto his race in the Senate. Now let's look more at this county map back in 2018 when Scott defeated Bill Nelson for his first term. And you can see Scott won by only about two-tenths of a percent, and this map is going to be a little bit bluer than the previous one. In Miami-Dade County, Rick Scott only got about 39 percent. That's far worse than Trump did two years later. Next door, Monroe County was blue. Pinellas was a five-point margin for Nelson. Orange County was also a little bit bluer. And many of these red counties were just not as red. Somehow, once he added all up, that was just enough for Scott to defeat the incumbent. That year, again, was a blue wave. But in the Senate, Republicans actually gained seats, in part because of this win right here. So in another sense, that actually completely defies the blue wave narrative, at least in the Senate. Real quick, let's glance at the last U.S. Senate election here. That was just a couple of years ago in 2022. Marco Rubio had no trouble winning that race. He was almost at 58 percent, and in his race, he actually won Miami-Dade County by about nine points. So this map is a lot redder. I don't expect Scott to get to this level, but all he has to do is slightly outperform what he did in 2018 with a little bit higher turnout, and he's going to win re-election. Now let's move on to their campaign websites. Here's the one for Rick Scott. If you want to read more about 
about him. Take a look at his endorsements. See where he stands on the issues or donate to his campaign. And then here's the site for Debbie Mukarso Powell. If you want to see what she's up to, take a look at her stances on the issues, her endorsements, or support her campaign. Now, what about debates? Well, so far there hasn't been any, and there's not any officially planned as of the time I'm recording this video. We've got a recent headline here that says, Will Florida voters be denied a Senate debate this election cycle? The GOP's Rick Scott has shown no inclination to engage with his Democratic opponent. This and all the other links will be down below in the description if you want to read more about this. But essentially, it looks like Scott is not actively trying to debate his opponent. I'm always pro-debate. I think every major office should have at least one debate between the major candidates. Scott might think he only has something to lose by debating. Of course, Bucarso Powell is going to want to get on that debate stage as she's considered the underdog. So I might understand why Scott might not want to do it, but I don't think he has an insurmountable advantage. And even so, I still think voters should get a debate. So hopefully that changes. But let's get on Wikipedia and take a look at the current polling. So right now in the aggregate, we've got Rick Scott with a modest advantage of 4.5 on 538 and 4.3 on Real Clear Politics. The individual polls all have Scott with the lead. Some of them, though, he's way under 50% support. Bucarso Powell, on the other hand, is at least over 40% in all the recent polls. There's been a couple that have showed it close where it's down to low single digits for Scott. So it's a lead, but not at all a comfortable lead for Scott. Now, for comparison, let's see how accurate the polls were back in Scott's first win in 2018. Here, most of the polls were pretty much back and forth leading up to the election in October. Although it does look like Bill Nelson was leading just a little bit more often when you go back a little bit further. So this was a pure toss-up six years ago. When it's that close, I don't think there's any shame in having a wrong prediction. But this time, Scott is the incumbent. I think it would be pretty embarrassing for Scott if he ended up going down. The last thing we could do is get on Poly Market and see where people are putting their money. Here it looks very comfortable for Scott. He's favored to win with 83%. Bucarso Powell, the Democrat, is all the way down at 17. Now, if one or two new polls drop and it shows a very narrow lead for Scott, I could easily see these markets tightening. So what is the conclusion here for Florida? Well, Rick Scott is not the strongest candidate, but he's the incumbent and he's proven himself to be very durable in winning statewide elections. He's relying on Trump at the top of the ticket and the recent trends of the state to easily carry him over the finish line. But Debbie Wicarso Powell is going to be relying on the key issue of abortion in the state. She's hoping to get support from women, suburban voters and independents, and cut into the margins in South Florida. It's a lot easier said than done. I think it would take a blue wave type of environment to truly put this state on the map. It's not impossible. Stranger things have happened. Just look at Scott defying the odds and taking out Bill Nelson in the blue wave of 18. It's always possible something significant happens, but short of that, Scott should be modestly favored to win re-election. So that's it for this look at the U.S. Senate race in Florida. So let me know in the comments, what do you think is going on in this race? Is Rick Scott in any danger whatsoever, even if a blue wave emerges? Or is there no chance that could happen and Scott could win by over 10 points in the end? What do you think about the current lack of a debate? How about Debbie Mukarso Powell and the issue of abortion? What's going to happen in South Florida? How about in relation to Trump at the top of the ticket? Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.